But what happens if you do misgender somebody else? What's the best response for, uh, from that point going forward? An apology and then restarting your sentence mm -hmm. back over. It's like apologize and then restate and then move from there, but don't make your guilt or your embarrassment the form, like that's not the, that's oh, yeah. not the issue. They were misgendered and their reaction is usually visceral. Like, What's up lovers and friends? Let's call a spade a spade. This YouTube channel is not what it used to be. It used to be a lot more informational and now it's a lot more personal and conversational. And if you've been missing the kind of content that lifts up your voice and your questions and informs, inspires, and entertains on topics to do with sex, love, relationships, and dating, I wanna let you know I've been making that content. It is out there, but specifically it is on Quibi. I have a daily show called Sexology with Shan Boudram in which every single day we tackle a different topic relating to intimacy. And then we illustrate and highlight people and perspectives that can relate to that topic or who have questions about that topic. It is by far the most incredible thing that I've gotten to be a part of. And as I'm sitting here right now on July the 2nd, there's already over 50 episodes you can go and watch right now to dive into the content and to do so, all you gotta do is download Quibi in your app store and you can get a free trial and then binge away and get the content that you've been missing most from me. One topic in particular that I'm so proud to highlight and share a full episode of today is the topic surrounding misconceptions in the LGBTQ community. If there is one group of people who are riddled with misconception, it is the LGBTQ community. I see a lot of misinformed questions out there on the internet, and rather than me answering them, I got a pro group right in front of me, so I wanted to pose them to you. You cool with that? Yeah. yeah. Can we kind of like drag them a little? Like, yes, uh, <laughs> just a little bit. Let's do it. All right. The first question is, how do lesbians have sex? Shana, you smiled. Have you ever gotten this one before? <laughs> yes. It's two bodies, so you can rub. There's penetration. There's oral. There's licking. There's touching. Like different positions. Like I don't know how to. Like there, you can use toys. There's so much that you can do. It's kind of funny when people ask, and it's like, okay, so is all you think of is all you do when you have sex, penis and vagina? Right, like, like it's, how do you have? Sex? Yeah, how do you have sex? Have and they sex. just like penis, vagina. That's it. I'm right. like. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> There's a reason why that lesbians orgasm to 20% more than heterosexual women do, and that is because they are not just doing penetration. There's a whole gamut of sexual play that you can do. And I'm actually happy this person asked this question rather than going to porn, which often shows lesbian sex in a very particular male gaze. Yeah. Mm. What's the acceptable way to ask someone if they're gay? No. Ask just them? Like ask, yeah, just right? ask them, right? Yeah, ask like, them. I don't know. I don't think it needs to be awkward. Like, you can, there's respectfully asking. You know, you can say, it's not a big deal to me, but I just want to be clear, like, you know? Right, I get hit on at work all the time. If folks come in and the first thing out of their mouth is, are you gay? It's like, honey, I don't know why you're asking, because right now I'm about to sell you something. Yes. Like, now's yeah. not the time. If we're at a bar and then someone comes up to me and is like, are you gay? Then I might feel a little bit better about it, depending on what bar I'm at. If you're not trying to have sex with them, then why are you asking? Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't need to know if I'm gay or not. It's important to remember that some of us are not in a safe place to be out. Mm -hmm. So sometimes just asking somebody can scare someone because that means, can they tell? Yes. Right. Am I not passing a straight? I think that that's part of the apprehension. Any interaction with people, you should never go to them and say, do you find me attractive? That's weird, <laughs> right? You give a compliment, you flirt, and you allow that person to respond back to you. Right. And then when it becomes pertinent, that's when you might just want to straight up ask. Yeah. Another question that train of thought is, are bisexual people gay and just haven't come out yet? I was I identified as bisexual for four years of my life, and then I started identifying as a lesbian. But even though that was my experience, I don't believe all bisexual people are in a way station where they're trying to decide if they're, whether they're gay or straight. Yeah. I know a lot of very happy bisexual people who have had very happy heterosexual relationships and homosexual relationships. There's been two terms that I've been hearing thrown around that I kind of like. There's heteroflexible and homoflexible, mm -hmm. which just is to kind of like let the world know, hey, like I know what my preference is, but I still am open to both. And I think that yeah. that's also valid identities with, I feel like bisexuality is a spectrum. Yes. It yes. Is. All right. Do you have to get gender assignment surgery to fully transition? Hell no. No. As a trans woman, when I first started my transition and I, I had body dysmorphia and I didn't understand it. So I thought my route as a trans woman was to be passable 
as cisgender and that I needed um, surgeries, I needed to take hormones and all of those things, but um, you know, I've grown into myself and I no longer want like gender confirmation surgery. That's not for me. That's not how I identify inside. Um, and it's not about presentation or, or any of that. So surgeries are optional. Medical transitions, such as hormone replacement therapy, that's optional. If you want to do all of that, that's great, but it is not necessary to do all of those things if you identify as trans. All right, this is going to be a question I think is going to get some heated responses back. I'm scared. Oh, no, don't be scared. Ooh. You're great. <laughs> is being non-binary a fad? How can you not be male or female? I mean, I switched gender identities like four times in one year because I learned from meeting other non-binary people who, <sighs> sorry, I don't know why I got emotional. Um, they showed me that I don't have to be um, one thing because I was starting to feel smothered by gender roles because gender roles carry over whether you're gay or straight. Yes. Learning that I didn't have to be a gender, as in sense of, um, I didn't have to be void of gender and I didn't have to choose a gender, made me free to be questioning my gender for two years. And I've identified different ways and I've used all of the pronouns. And then I settled on bi gender because I realized that I'm both at once. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't have known that if I didn't meet non binary, I couldn't have known that if I didn't meet non binary people who were proud enough who are brave enough to keep being themselves regardless of people questioning them. Yes. I think that's the, the joy and power of language is to know I'm not alone. That's what a word says, that this word was created because there are others like me who have felt this way or experienced what I've experienced. And so those words like agender and bigender and gender queer are so essential for people to say, well, hang on a second, what does that mean? I think that actually feels right for me. And the point that everyone made so beautifully here is that you're allowed to change that. So if there is somebody who is watching this who has a question and they have misconceptions, what's your advice for them? To ask. I mean, if they're not gonna ask you, they might go to the internet where things aren't right or they might just sit in their ignorance. Also, when you ask, don't take that as the clear cut and dry. <laughs> yeah. Like take that as, okay, that's one experience out of however many people, millions of you people identify You mean you guys aren't all the president of the queer community? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's... I didn't run, so. Yeah. I did and I lost, but <laughs> still. Thank you so much for answering those questions. And thank you to you for watching Sexology. And that's a sneak peek of my show. I am obsessed with it. Jared loves it. I do love it. Yes, he did. He just walked in the room. Um, and if you want to fall in love as well, too, please give it a chance. Once again, all you have to do is go into the app store, download Quibi, sign up for a free trial, look for Sexology with Shamboo Dram, and get your binge on.